Welcome to Design to Move, a weekly functional movement series reviewing common movement impairment syndromes, muscle imbalances, and injury cycles, and how to correct for them. Don't just exercise, but restore optimal movement. Everybody, welcome back to Design to Move. My name is Ryan Maxwell. This is Ryan Parr. We're both movement specialists here at Philadelphia Fitness. Today, we're gonna to go over a common movement imbalance called lower cross imbalance. This has to do with an excess of tension in the quadricep muscles, the front hip muscles, the lower back erectors, and the latissimus muscles, the muscles that pull their arms down, but also hyperextend the lower lumbar spine. We're gonna go through a series of exercises to show you how to reduce that. If you have questions on any of this, you can reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com, or you can read the blog on the topic. It's gonna to be in the description below. You'll also notice we have a table of contents to the side, with timestamps of the segments, and a condensed version of the video for your reference at the bottom. Let's get started. This is our mobility and release segment of our video. Today we're gonna to be targeting three different muscle groups, the calf or gastrocnemius muscles, the anterior hip muscles, the quadriceps, and the lower back muscles, the erectors. To address the calf or gastrocnemius muscles, we're gonna use a lacrosse ball. So we've got a run of the mill uh, lacrosse ball, pretty viscous, it's gonna grip. And we're gonna identify the muscle right above the Achilles tendon that attaches down to your heel. So Ryan would take his leg and basically place the weight of his leg down on the lacrosse ball and maybe even take his other leg to drape over his other leg to create more compressive force down on that ball. And he can start to roll down the length of his calf towards his knee until he comes to a tender point. Now remember, gastrocnemius muscles help to push the toe down so it would plant to flex the toe. Okay, and it helps with propulsion, which is a pushing off during gait. Now, oftentimes these muscles get too tight and then they push us into a forward lean position with our hips coming back. And that again is gonna create excess tension around the quads and hips and lower back. So we will reduce the pressure points and actually see an increase in range of motion around the ankle. So with the pressure putting, being put down on the leg, we're gonna hold it there for just a little bit. And that's gonna put some pressure into the sensory receptors around the muscle fibers and the tendons. And that should help to create a relaxing release or response in the muscle. And then you can start to articulate or move the joint. So we're gonna do the opposite of what the muscle does. Instead of pushing the toe down, we're gonna pull it up and gently roll it inward at the ankle. Now, once we're done, we're gonna relax the muscle, let it come down and see if we can sink deeper into the muscle fibers. I like to breathe in as we do this to extend through the back, pulling up through the hamstrings, pull the toes up and in and then breathe out and let it sink. You'll notice that with every iteration of that breathing cycle and the movement through the ankle, that the muscle naturally starts to soften and you're able to get deeper and deeper each time you let the toe go, go down and the passive tone of the muscle starts to increase. So again, we would do this for about six to 10 cycles and then move into the next area of the body. The quadriceps is the next area of the body that we wanna target and specifically the uppermost or the frontmost quadricep muscle called the rectus femoris. Now there's four muscles in this whole complex and the two that we're starting to see really dominate into the hip or have an impact on the hip is the rectus femoris, the one that attaches from the kneecap to the hip line, and the vastus lateralis, the muscle that attaches from the kneecap up to the hip bone over here called the trochanter. Now both of these muscles help to support the anchor of the knee, extend the knee, and again, lift the hip up. So what we wanna do is reduce all that pressure and tone, and we can do that with this five inch foam ball, it's our fluid ball, you can buy one online, um, and then take out this muscle pressure. So Ryan's gonna lay on top of it, he's gonna put his knee just below the, the ball, and maybe about three inches above his kneecap, and then he's gonna start working up the length of his quad until he feels the first pressure point. We're gonna start on the front side of the muscle. So he's gonna do that on the left side of his body, the one facing the camera here. And then he's gonna take his right leg and extend it over to the side here, called abduct the leg. So he's gonna bring his hip up into flexion. That way he can shift his weight a little bit more onto the ball and also position his body in a position where his brain would naturally think that that leg is gonna to start to lengthen and stretch or that muscle is gonna lengthen and stretch. So by being in this position, he's gonna support his spine. We wanna make sure that he's not excessively arching and not excessively rounding and bowing up. He's keeping his weight up over his shoulders. So by putting the pressure onto the quad, again, we're still trying to trigger that neuromuscular release. The pressure on the ball or from the ball should start to pull into these fibers and get them to relax over a period of time. You can encourage that by breathing out and positioning your body in a natural state of gait. So he's gonna go and basically put his body into a position where he would resemble a step 
taking a step forward on his right leg where his left leg would be behind him stretching. So if he was in this position, his head would be naturally to the left and his eyes would be to the right. Okay, right, now he's gonna breathe out, flex his abdominals, and then breathe in, and then start to bend through the knee and floss these muscle fibers through the tension of the ball. It's called a pin and stretch technique. It's a soft tissue mobilization. He's gonna breathe out, let the leg come back into extension, and then sink deeper into the belly of the muscle. Just like with the calf, we're gonna go through about six to 10 iterations. What you wanna do is pull the fibers up to the, po uh, the point of the ball. You might feel that little adhesion bundle if there's an adhesion there. Come up to the edge of the ball. Try not to pull so far through the bend of the knee that it slides through. You just wanna kind of butt it up there and I'll just kind of push it and shear it away. So again, six to 10 reps, and then we'll move into the next segment. Our last area of release is going to be the erectors. These are long muscles that cascade along the side of your spine on both sides. They basically help to extend the back. And obviously these guys are really tight when the hips dump down and the back is pulled into extension, so they're compressed. So we wanna give them a little breath and get some circulation back into them. So Ryan's positioned himself onto a foam roller and the foam roller is up along his rib cage. Now, again, you could start with the roller closer in towards the pelvis and work your way up. For today, we're just gonna show you how to isolate the thoracic portion. And again, you could go into the lumbar portion. In fact, you know what, Ryan, let's do both. So why don't you scooch down the roller a little bit. We're gonna bring that roller up towards or roll it down towards your pelvis. So in order to do that, there's a couple things. You're gonna need some sufficient abdominal strength, right? You'll notice that Ryan's hips are slightly elevated off the ground. That's actually gonna pull those muscles into a stretch because he's posteriorly rotating his pelvis under. Now he's gonna breathe out, crunch down, and that's actually gonna floss the muscle between the pressure again of the roller and his actual ribcage and spine, right? So as he comes down, he's gonna release and sink into extension. So this is the natural rhythmic breathing pattern using your active x prior with your abdominals to stretch the erectors and then breathe in and extend through the spine, lengthen through the spine and actually sink into the belly of the muscle. So that's gonna again, stretch it under tone with the roller there and then breathe in and then gently come into a neutral extension in the spine. The whole time you're gonna notice that Ryan's not doing anything excessive. So he's not gonna go deep into a deep flexion, too deep, and he's not also gonna come back into a hyperextension. He's just kneading and working these muscles open, helping the body to restore its natural length relationship. And again, opening up some circulation so that these muscles can be strong and in their proper length. So if you wanna isolate one side over the other, because again, they are parallel, you can rotate to one edge, breathe in, deeply breathe out, crunch down, breathe in. Again, looking for an increase in passive tone, go through that breathing pattern six to 10 times, and you can isolate multiple sections throughout the spine. Now, if we take him up to the thoracic portion of his spine, he'll roll down, again, thoracic meaning rib cage, He's gonna change his breathing pattern a little bit. He's still gonna keep his hips up, so that's gonna engage his abdominal pressure and hold his ribs down. Now he's gonna breathe in, bear hug the world. Again, this should be up closer to the scapula, shoulder blades, and then breathe out and then sink down into the belly of the muscles and then compress them down. By breathing in, it's gonna stretch through the rib line, putting pressure into the roller and then breathe out and then sink back down on top of that roller. Once again, we can do about six to 10 breathing cycles, isolate one side or the other. You normally gonna find one side is more tender or again, more fibrous dense. And that would bring us to the end of your erectors. This brings us to our activation segment. We're gonna be targeting the medial hamstrings, gluteals, and abdominals all under one exercise. This is gonna be an elevated hip press. Let's get going. So Ryan's laying supine on the mat. He's got his foam roller under his feet and his knees are bent at 90. He's gonna start the position by keeping his lower back on the ground. Now he's gonna do that by getting all the air out of his ribs. A couple muscles that help to pull the pelvis under to offset that anterior drop in the pelvis are the hamstrings and your abdominals. So today we wanna to emphasize engaging both of those muscles in an intermuscular coordinated position while coordinating our breathing mechanics so that we can put all these systems to play or in play as they're intended. So he's gonna breathe out, get his abs to lock down, 
So that way his spine doesn't move. And then he's gonna push through his heels and lift his hips up to a count of two. And then breathe out. And slowly let his hips come down to a count of four. Now again, as we do this, the primary focus is not to let the back hyperextend at the top of the hip extension, or again, see a noticeable just kerplunk at the bottom. He's gonna keep the pressure on the glutes the entire time. Now, because he's on a roller, it's a little unstable and the legs are gonna to wanna to kick out. That's gonna force his hamstrings to fire up to try to create more tension, to pull the knee back into flexion. So it's gonna to help to reinforce that position and their engagement. So again, we're gonna come up for count of two, breathing in, holding the rib line down, and then breathing out. And you're gonna to try to get all the air out of your lungs as you slowly let the hips come back down towards the mat. And again, let it hover there at the bottom before you repeat. So good job, Ryan, you can finish it off. A couple cues, make sure that the knees don't buckle in or out. Make sure that one leg doesn't lead over the other. So if you push up and one leg hips lifts up more, you'll start to see the knees buckle out on one side, it means you're overusing one side. And again, try not to let your ribs inflate and let your neck kick back as you press up. Again, we can do this for 20 repetitions. With that time under tension, give yourself a minute and do a second round. If you notice that any of these compensations show up, make sure to pull your punches. Don't do more. You're basically gonna reinforce poor mechanics and bad posture. So we're gonna wanna do it actively. So once again, two sets, 20 reps, and then let's move into integration. Let's get bring us to our integration segment of the video. We're gonna be doing a step back with the distraction using an exercise band. So Ryan set up here with two exercise bands around his right leg. He's gonna be using an integration motion and this is basically coordinating his hip motion and his ankle. You'll notice that I have a band wrapped around his hip. It's right up by his inguinal or his, his groin. And then we've got a lighter band down by his ankle, which is called the talus. And we're using both to help increase the pressure on his gluteal with this band and then help to slide that talus so he can get more mobility out of his ankle, thereby engaging his glute more efficiently. So what we're hoping for is that he's gonna use this additional tension to get more proximal engagement of his gluteal as he comes up out of his lunge or step back. So Ryan's gonna step back, maintaining his center of mass so his shoulders are up over his hips. You know that he's hinging through his pelvis. He's gonna let his knee glide forward so he gets a nice deep stretch out of that calf. A lot of times we have obstructed talus glide due to which we can't get a full you know, dorsiflexion of the ankle. So we wanna use that to our advantage. And then he's gonna push through his heel, breathe out, push his hip under, engage his abdominals, and push his hip up into extension. Now notice he stepped over his opposite leg, the working leg, and that again is gonna help him with the stretch out of the quad of that working leg. It's gonna help him with the stretch out of the gastroc of that working leg, and he's still maintaining his center of mass up over his hips. So he's gonna breathe in, sink down, let the band pull his hip back into flexion, and then breathe out, pull forward, anchor his abdominals to stabilize his pelvis, and then push through until he starts to see his heel lift off the ground. We're gonna to wanna to repeat that for 20 repetitions, breathing in as we sink, get nice and low, let the knee travel up to the tip of the toe so you get the dorsiflexion out of the ankle, and then breathe out and push your weight forward. Make sure at the top that you don't pull your punch, so really engage your glute and push your hip forward. You'll feel it as a nice stretch through the hip flexors and the quad, and again, this is gonna to help to restore the natural balance of your lumbar pelvic hip stability, and again, teach your body how to move through space. So two sets, 20 repetitions, one minute of uh, time in between to rest, and make sure to get both legs. We'll get into our next one. And we're gonna finish it off with our last segment, strength. We're gonna be targeting all the abdominals. All you're gonna do is a basic supine crunch. Let's rock and roll. This last strength exercise is gonna target our abdominals. Once again, these are the muscles that help to pull the pelvis under. We've engaged them with our activation, we put them into play with our integration, and now we're gonna really isolate them at the very end. We don't wanna fatigue these before we move on them, that's why we put this at the end of the program. So basically what we wanna do is support our head with our fingertips. You'll notice that Ryan's knees are bent at 90, his heels are planted on the ground. So feel your heels on the ground, feel your lower back on the mat. If you're really dealing with lower cross and hyperextension, you may have a hard time doing that, and we can start with a, maybe just a slow, really isolated crunch. So again, don't force it, especially if you're feeling pain, okay? Sometimes people's lower backs are so tight that if you crunch, it actually starts to pull too hard on those erectors. So 
Again, go at your own pace. One more time, we wanna make sure that the knees stay inside the hip line, and we're gonna breathe in against gravity, pulling our body weight up, supporting our head and our fingertips, and keeping our chin nice and tucked so that we don't overuse our cervical superficial extensors or flexor muscles, rather. Then we're gonna breathe out to a count of four and slowly bring our body back down to the ground. Now again, this is running contrary to our natural breathing cycle. Normally we breathe in and extend and breathe out and flex, but we're doing the opposite of that because we want the diaphragm, your primary inhalation muscle, to work against your abdominals, your active expiration muscle. So learning how to coordinate both of those muscles together will help to help them live in symmetry so that your body can do this all the time despite the effects of gravity, momentum, or ground reaction forces. So again, he's gonna breathe in, lift up, crunch up deep, pull his torso up as far as he can without pulling his arms into flexion or letting his neck crane into extension, and then breathe out and come down to a count of four. The whole time, supporting his core so that even at the bottom of the position, if available, he's gonna keep the lower back in contact with the ground. So once again, we're gonna to wanna to go through two sets of 20 repetitions with a minute of time in between to recover. Make sure that you complete each of these with perfect form. If you notice the arms come up or the head jets out or the legs start to sway side to side or open, you're gonna to wanna to reduce the volume, stay within perfect precision and alignment, and that will bring us to the end of our strength segment. So that brings us to the end of our segment on lower cross and balance. Remember, this condition has to do with an overuse of the front hip flexor muscles and the calf muscles that limit our mobility through our ankles and create hypermotion in our hips. We wanna contain that by increasing the strength of the muscles that are usually deficient, and that's gonna be the abdominals and gluteals. If you can continue to do this a couple times a week, you'll see a noticeable increase in your posture, your ability to maintain your hips, and if you are experiencing pain around the hips, knees, or lower back, it hopefully will help to reduce that. Once again, if you have any questions on the topic, you can reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. Again, on behalf of myself, Ryan, and Ryan Park, thanks for joining us. Remember, your body's designed to move, so stay in motion, and we'll see you next time.